our next guest uh, has become a good friend and a guy that I really look up to um, who's really taken a program to new heights in his tenure as the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers head football coach. Let's welcome to the show uh, head coach P.J. Fleck. Hey, coach. Hey, Ryan. How are you, man? I'm doing really well. How are you doing? Doing elite. Thanks for asking. Doing elite. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Um Draftable players at your university have skyrocketed. Uh, we look back at the few drafts before and where we sit for tonight and for the weekend. Um, and I'd like to talk about a couple of those players, but just the culture that you've cultivated and and really put in place there that has uh, allowed for this and allowed for you to go recruit those types of athletes and develop. Just kind of talk to us about that philosophy, uh, that culture you've built so far in Minneapolis. You know, first of all, I mean, it takes a whole village, right? And we've got incredible people here, Ryan, and you've been around our program here and there and, and got to know what we do and how we do it. But, you know, the reason, you know, I'm here uh, is to be able to be a bridge that connects our 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s of national championships, Big Ten championships, and be that bridge in culture to connect it to today. Uh, and one of our main focuses is we've got to get more talented players and be able to develop them on and off the field because how you, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So academically, we have the highest GPA in the history of the program. Socially, our players are doing the right things for the most part, right? And, and wanting to do and build healthy relationships spiritually doesn't mean religion just means believe in something bigger than yourself. Make it about someone else, serve and give. And then athletically, we hope you really want to play in the NFL. Football's too hard if you just don't have that dream, right? And a lot of our guys do. And that's one of the main points in recruiting. So when we got here, we said we want to be able to do it our way. We didn't want to do it with a bunch of transfers. We wanted to do it with high school kids, develop them from freshmen, give them a chance to play early, and then develop them all the way through because those are the models of the Wisconsin's and the Iowa's. And we've got to be able to get our program to that level. We haven't had an offensive lineman drafted since 2006. Think about that stat, right? An offensive lineman, period. Well, that was one of the main things we said we were going to change. And this year, this week's draft, Blaze Andrews, right? Daniel Falele, Sam Schluter. Hopefully we have three guys drafted, but those are guys we played very, very early. And then hopefully they set the precedent for what we're doing into the future. So, um, again, it's a holistic approach. It's a holistic culture. And uh, our guys really care about their entire life. And it's worked out okay for us. You mentioned, you mentioned Daniel uh, Falele and uh... – Tell us a, a bit about him. What went into the process? He's six foot nine, three hundred and eighty pounds. If any of you guys have ever seen him uh, up against not only Coach Fleck but his other teammates, uh, just, just talk about his impact and what it's like coaching a player like him. Well, first of all, I mean, you know, this is called the Big Ten for a reason, <laughs> not the Little Ten, and um, you better be big up front. And when we were looking at recruiting our first year, we were looking at line. We're like, we got to get way bigger. First of all. Because uh, we're a very heavy inside zone team, outside zone team, counter team. We got to get big, and um, but you still have to be athletic. And you know he had every offer from everybody in the country. And I still remember one of the things that set him apart was our administration. I mean, Mark Coyle, our athletic director, allowed us to fly his mom from Australia to here. Which back then, I mean, the ticket was astronomical. I'm sure a lot of people said, "Well, mom's not going to come out to visit." We flew mom out, and next thing you know, he committed. And I said, why'd you commit here? He's like, well, you took care of my mom. Oh. You flew her out on the official visit. And in his culture, it's everything. And that meant everything to him and his family. Not only that, that showed in his, in, in, in his life because when he did come here, shoot, mom moved here. She ended up moving to Minneapolis and brought the whole family. So uh, when you kind of think about all in, that's what you kind of think about with Daniel and his family and the people that support him. Uh, and I'm just very thankful he chose Minnesota. And it worked out really well for us. Yeah, it certainly has. He uh, he was Tanner's uh, protector there for for that time. Um, an, another prospect that that I've had a chance to really look at, Boye Mafa. Uh, talk to us about his presence, what you expect from him, where he could go in the next couple of days, and his development at Minnesota with you. Yeah, well, we hope he goes tonight. You know, I think he's got the skill set. You know, we said from day one uh, that he's going to, when people watch him at the Combine, he's going to have the best numbers at the Combine. And he darn near did that. 
and that we knew that right when we recruited him. He's from Hopkins, Minnesota. Uh, incredible pass rusher. Um, that's at the given. But I think one thing he's gotten way better at, which I hopefully uh, feel like you know the, the amount of teams that keep talking to me about him, even all the way up through the draft, has been how good he's been on the uh, the first and second down run game. And I think you can have just the pass rusher, or you can have a pass rusher plus he can play first and second down. And we're talking about 46 guys active roster for game day. The more Swiss Army knives you can have, the better, as long as the knife is still sharp. So for him, that that's a little bit about him. He's one of the best people you will ever meet. He's a wonderful locker room connector. Uh, he's a pleaser. Uh, he's just such a phenomenal human being. And whichever team he goes to, he's going to make that team better instantly. And uh, he's very grateful. He's very humble. Uh, he's going he's gonna to do very well in the league. Well, hopefully he falls in line with the Batemans and, of course, the Winfield Juniors uh, of your program who have just – uh, exemplified it incredibly well. Let's talk about your your current program and uh, and you just you just finished the spring. Um, what was your biggest takeaway from this football team and and the next step you guys are going to make heading into 2022? Yeah, we actually talked about breaking boring. That's been the whole theme of the year. And uh, to just you know we, we we kind of in a society that you know we kind of we go through COVID and everybody gets bored and everybody wants to go back to work and everybody goes back to work and we don't want to work anymore. We want to go back to not doing anything. It's just kind of boring. So we wanted to create non-boring, break it. And so everything we've done since January has been completely different than we, we, what we've done it. We're actually still not done with spring ball. We got today's practice and then we got our spring game on Saturday. I think we're the latest spring game in the country, but all done by design. And our players have answered every challenge they chased every challenge down, and they've, they've, they've answered every bell that we have put in front of them since January. Uh, it's a fun team to coach. They truly do it for each other. And hopefully with that combination of breaking boring, doing it for each other, that we can find a way to soar to new heights. And, and if we can do that, uh, that would be really good for our football program. Was there was there a thought process in place, like you just talked about, of placing the, the spring game so late? In particular, because uh, the deadline for the transfer portal, of course, uh, is May first, and it kind of a lot of players sometimes think and uh, and evaluate what spring ball looks like. But you guys go right up to that deadline, and it kind of allows you to to really understand what your roster is going to be. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it. One, you get a lot more time on the front end of just individual instruction with the NCAA rules. You get to play football a little bit longer, right? Uh, and so. A lot of teams have been on the road recruiting, which means you're away from your team during this portal. Um, and, and I wanted to be around my team all the way up until the end. Our guys have very open, transparent conversations inside this program. I have very open and transparent conversations with them. I wanted to be around them. And for the guys who are going to enter, a lot of them I already know. And a lot of them we're going to have a talk here very soon. So it wasn't about hiding it from me or me hiding it from them. Uh, I feel like being around my team is really important all the way through to when the portal can, can obviously end. And, um, and I think that, that's really healthy to have, open conversations and be around our team as long as we possibly can be around them. Um, because if we're around them and they know it's open and transparent and it's honest, then that doesn't allow a lot of people to come in from different parties and third parties and put things into her head. Next thing you know, I can't, I can't do anything about it because I'm on the road recruiting. I can't see you. Um, so there's a lot of healthy benefits to it and a lot of them on the field as well. It gave us more time on the front end to prepare. Not only that, we usually uh, practice, then go on spring break, then come back. But this week, we, this time we went all the way to spring, back, spring break, went on spring break, came back for two more weeks where we could just do individual instruction, get them in the weight room, adapt them a little bit more. Um, because we saw a lot of soft tissue injuries at times coming back from spring break when they maybe haven't done everything our tempo for that week. And then we've had a pretty healthy training camp uh, so, or a healthy spring ball. So, again, a lot of reasons that go into it. Um, I really liked how the COVID schedule worked. And we just, again, finding new ways to do it, finding new ways to make your program better and uh, listening to the data that's out there. We're speaking with uh, Minnesota Golden Gophers head football coach P.J. Fleck here on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the recruiting aspect of things and the NIL variable that – that's hanging out there, right? Coaches and, and uh, programs aren't influential with that aspect of things. It's outside. 
what is your take on this? We've talked to many different coaches about the NIL thing and what needs to change because ultimately this is becoming an arms race and smaller market teams are going to have a difficult time staying up. Well, I, I think that one, if it's good for the student athlete, I'm good with. Right. I've always said that. I think the transfer portal, its intentions of being created are incredibly healthy. NIL, the intentions of how it's created, it's 100% healthy and all about the student athlete. When you start to look at where we are with the NIL, I think it's really positive for players to be able to benefit off their name. But again, when we're kind of going down where will college football look like, I think that's where it all gets mixed, right? And when NIL and transfer portal collide, and then there's tampering, and then there's all these other things, players leaving school to go for more money or things like that, which I don't know if everybody saw coming. But now with the – the, the NCAA, the, the future of that or what it looks like, everybody's kind of in this holding pattern, including the rules committee, right? So uh, it's going to be interesting uh, over the next however many months of what college football actually looks like. Um, but, again, we're taking it one day at a time here. Uh, our, our student athletes are able to benefit from it. Uh, we can't have any involvement in it, but they can benefit from it. And then not only the transfer portal, it, it's originally intended for student-athletes to go benefit somewhere else if you're not going to play. Yeah. We benefited off the transfer portal. So uh, like anything, change is inevitable. Uh, and we're going to find out here in the next however many months of, of what the future of college football looks like. And I'm sure it will then change some more as we keep moving forward. Well, I, I, before I let you go, I wanted to uh, give you a, kind of an opportunity in the platform to talk about one of your – amazingly inspirational players in Casey O'Brien um, and his fight against cancer. Uh, you've spoken openly about it, uh, what he's been to the meant to the team and the staff and everything like that. And you can kind of give us a, an update of where he's at and, and, and how you guys are dealing with it. Well, I think if the world had all Casey O'Brien's, I don't think we'd have the problems we have in our world right now. Yeah, uh, He's one of the most remarkable human beings you will ever meet one of the most inspirational human beings, courageous human beings, and he's what Row the Boat is all about. Uh, or is always in the water. He always has a positive attitude. He never gives up. He's what that's all about. Uh, he's you know battling cancer for the sixth time, uh, and he's defeated it five times. And there's no doubt in my mind he'll defeat it for a sixth time. Uh, you know, he, he works for RBC. He's in the financial world. And the outlook he has on life, we can all learn from. And I think he, he's just he's just that inspiration that we all need. And sometimes we just need to stop and look how other people have it. And he not only has been dealt some really rough cards, uh, he's been able to play those cards in a very positive way. He's raised an enormous amount of money for the Masonic Children's Hospital. He's got an amazing platform and uses it for all the good when a lot of people just look at it as so bad. I've never met anyone like him. And um, he's so close to our program. He's at practice all the time, uh, and now he's got another fight on his hand. So any thoughts, prayers, uh, anything towards Casey O'Brien that, that the listeners can do would be much appreciated. Uh, but there's no doubt in my mind uh, that he'll defeat it for the sixth time here soon, and um, he's just one of the best human beings you'll ever meet. Well, Coach, I appreciate that. Yeah, he is a definite inspiration. So are you. Continue your Great work there at the University of Minnesota. I can't wait. And maybe next time I get out there, you'll actually be on campus so we can spend some time together. How about that? I would love that. You guys are welcome anytime. Appreciate you having us on the show. Row the boat, Sky and Mago. Go Gophers and go T-Wolves. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.